Anand Krishnan now joining us live from Beijing. Anand, we've been speaking about what is you know likely on the cards, but let's just look at the more contentious issues. Sir. Let's look at the border issues. How do we see that in fact rolling out in these in the next two days? Yeah, I think the focus has very much been on trade relations and the economic deals that are going to be signed. And at least uh, the view from Beijing is, I think they want to have as little attention as possible on the boundary dispute, only because it's such a difficult issue, and neither side is uh, will find it, uh, you know acceptable to budge from their positions on it. So I think for the next three days, what you will see is a focus on the 16 deals that you mentioned and Chinese investment that's uh, coming into India. And beyond the trade deals, I think in China, the other big expectation is what you're going to do with having two new leaders at the helm with Xi Jinping in Beijing and Narendra Modi in Delhi. I think the focus is, can both sides look at a new way of dealing with each other after 50 years of you know, being hostage to the boundary issue and other problems? Absolutely, Anand, stay with us, you know, because Chinese incursions along the line of control ahead of the president's visit are making headlines. Troops of the People's Liberation Army have intruded 500 meters inside Indian territory and put up tents near Demchok village in Ladakh. Now, the Indian Army and the PLA were locked in a three-week standoff in May last year. Remember, a total of 334 incursions from the Chinese side have been reported along India's disputed border with China in 2014 alone. Eastern Ladakh, however, continues to be a flashpoint between India and China. A flag meeting was held between military commanders on Monday after a troop face-off in Chamar. A civilian confrontation, confrontation has been persisting in Demchok as well, where India has strongly objected to the People's Liberation Army's attempt to construct a road leading right up to the line of actual control in the Chumar sector. Both sides, though, have agreed to a drawdown and set up teams to re-establish peace. Now, this, uh, Anand, is, this is an issue that is likely to be taken up in talks between Modi and the President as well. No, I don't think the specific uh, incursion is going to figure on the talks because that's something that's handled by officials, uh, probably the National Security Advisor and uh, China State Councillor. But I think on the boundary issue, we'll probably see uh, Xi Jinping and Narendra Modi talk about it in general terms. I think uh, from India's point of view, we'll reiterate the message that uh, as only if you can ensure peace and tranquility on the boundary can be had cooperation in our fields, whether it's economic or climate change or whatever, uh, whichever field. So I think really the message that uh, a foundation of the relationship is to ensure that incursion incidents don't happen. But I think also it's, we should step back and uh, from the three week long incursion that we saw in Depsang in May last year, I think military officials on India and China will tell you that actually the situation on the boundary has improved from what we've seen in the last three, four years. And that's in part because of a border defense cooperation agreement. And last right. so I think the situation on the boundary is a little more complex. Than, I don't think the situation is getting worse. We seem to have, uh, we'll try and uh, re-establish that connection there with uh, Anand Krishna now. But we also have Gaurav, Gaurav Savant, our strategic affairs editor, now joining us. Gaurav, uh, you know, ch the Chinese president's trip uh, to India this week, highlighting the subtle shift in the regional power dynamic, really, that is bringing warmer ties between, you know, these Asian giants challenging China's traditional relationship with Pakistan and opening a new chapter in Beijing's ongoing competition for influence with Japan. Well, these are clearly changing dynamics in the region. Uh, what we've been told is the effort is to forge new closer ties, a new chapter in India-China relations. And it's not just restricted to economy and infrastructure. The effort from what sources uh, in the government tell us is to see that India and China are, have convergence in thinking not just about the region but about the world because as the Prime Minister said, when you have 35% of the world's population thinking and acting alike you will change dynamics across the world but this is easier said than done Sanjana as you were rightly pointing out there is an intense standoff at the line of actual control in Demchok not for the first time 340 odd incursions from the Chinese side right behind me is the Sabarmati riverfront and this is where Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, will be taking the Chinese President Xi Jinping for a walk uh, uh, in, uh, in some hours from now around 5 this evening that is when the Chinese incursions will also be taken up uh, during their conversation. And will we see a new beginning? Well, the taste of pudding lies in its eating, Sanjana.
Gaurav, stay with us. You know, Modi set the tone for the president's three-day visit, calling it an inch towards the miles that the two nations have to cover together. Modi said that every inch that India and China cover has the potential of rewriting history. Every mile crossed will go a long way in making this planet a better place. Now, meanwhile, New Delhi is abuzz with speculation that President Jinping could actually raise the issue of setting up a maritime silk road between the two countries. This, even as New Delhi walks the tightrope on diplomacy, it is also looking at talking tough on the boundary issue. The government will be tempted to accept the Chinese terms on the Silk Road. But would Beijing be willing, Gaurav, to address these bilateral security issues? New Delhi would not also like to be caught in a position where it is accused of causing up to Japan. So exactly what we were talking about earlier. Well, this clearly is a tightrope walk uh, for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Recently, he was in Kyoto uh, and in Tokyo uh, on his visit to Japan. There, he spoke of how the two most powerful democracies in the region, the second and the third most powerful economies of the region, India and Japan, will decide how Asia moves forward and how the world moves forward. Similarly, now in the two more populous countries in the world, India and China, uh, work together. The effort will be to ensure the three powers in Asia, along with several smaller powers in Asia, they operate in tandem. Uh, it will be an elaborate game of, of chess, so to say. Uh, you'll keep trying to checkmate the adversary. While there is competition, and that is how External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj described uh, the relationship between India and China, not enemies, but competitors. So there will be intense co uh, competition for markets, uh, for friends, for, for access to resources in Africa, for access to the world. So there's also a situation to avoid tension and to avoid tension, the more power uh, the block wheels, the better it will be. So India, Japan will be an effective counterweight to China. Similarly, China and India operating together will be a very powerful economic signal that will go out to the world. So it is hoped, it is hoped that should this work out the way it is intended to work out, tensions along the LAC will come down in the times to come. And is a cash-rich China looking to outwit rival Japan by pledging to invest billions of dollars in Indian infrastructure projects? In the run-up to the Chinese Premier's India visit, Chinese officials escalated the talk of scaling up investments in India regarded widely as the most safe investment destination, especially after Japan announced it was committed to investing $35 billion in India. The decision was taken during Prime Minister Modi's Tokyo visit, while Japan backed the Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train project Chinese officials have shown interest in Chennai and Bangalore and Bangalore-Mumbai corridors for high-speed trains. Now, quickly, let me uh, cut across uh, to Anand Krishnan. We uh, seem to re-establish the connection uh, back in Beijing. Anand, uh, you know, it, Jinping's visit comes at a time where, you know, there's during a swing through the region that also includes stops in Maldives and places like Sri Lanka where Chinese companies are at work, you know, on, a, on major port and other infrastructure projects. Right, we seem to have lost the line there with uh, Anand, but let me uh, quickly cut across uh, to Gaurav with the same question. Gaurav, you know, um, this visit, of course, coming in at a time where you're able to sort of block these other pro projects, you know, that have Chinese infrastructural projects. Uh, Chinese companies are at work on these major ports and uh, other, uh, you know, research and projects there in Maldives and Sri Lanka. So that includes a stop there as well. Yes, China is increasing its sphere of influence in this region. Now, this is a string of pearls policy that India will have to effectively counterbalance. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, immediately after taking over, tried to do just that when he invited uh, the, the SARC heads of state and government uh, to India, where he's also talked about increasing uh, our, our uh, influence in this entire region. So this is a chess game that will continue. But if I could just show you around uh, this place where we are, this is the Sabarmati riverfront. And just a kilometer down is the Gandhi ashram. That's the Gandhi bridge that you see here. Now, at the Sabarmati riverfront, uh, when the two heads of state and government when prime minister narendra modi and the chinese president xi jinping they walk down the sabarmati riverfront this will be one uh, one of the issues that will be on the table chinese investment what will also be on the table is the move away from bullet to bullet train so investment in infrastructure projects and as as some some analysts have been saying this is china clearly wanting to invest in prime minister narendra modi's dream of smart cities mega cities mega highways mega ports energy projects 
how much of this will actually fructify in one meeting here in Ahmedabad, how much of it will carry over to Delhi tomorrow and then in the times to come, that of course remains to be seen. But uh, as you were pointing out, uh, uh, you know, quoting the Prime Minister, this is a movement forward from inches to miles. Absolutely, Gaurav. A double celebration in Gujarat's capital city today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Ahmedabad for his birthday celebration. And the city also playing host to the Chinese president who will be kick-starting his India trip with Gujarat. The first meeting between the two leaders is expected to take place on the banks of the river Sabarbati. Don't let these Chinese posters fool you into thinking that this is a town in China. This is actually Ahmedabad in Gujarat. The Prime Minister's home state has rolled out the red carpet to make sure Chinese Premier feels at home when he visits the state later today. The excitement is double, as today is also Narendra Modi's birthday. The meeting between Xi and Modi on the Sabarmati riverfront is being watched keenly not just in India but across the world. Gujarat welcomes His Excellency Xi Jinping the Chinese president to India. Now these boats have come across all over Gujarat, all over Ahmedabad and here the Sabarmati riverfront is being spruced up to welcome the Chinese president. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will entertain the Chinese president here at the Sabarmati riverfront. You can see special tents being put up here, decoration, decorations being put up here. Uh, a glimpse of Gujarat for the Chinese president over 100 specially made vegetarian dishes for the Chinese president also traditional Gujarati dance you'll have Garba you'll have Dandia Ras uh, a glimpse of Gujarat a glimpse of India for the Chinese president and his entourage this will be the first time that a head of state will be meeting the Prime Minister not in New Delhi but in another state and on Modi's birthday Xi Jinping is coming along with a host of presents for India. China plans to invest close to $100 billion as FDI, packs on industrial park, railways, spa, automobiles, textile, food processing are expected to be signed between the two countries. China is also expected to present its case for the development of the bullet train. Modernization of railways is another area where China is looking to invest millions of dollars. We should welcome um, investment from China. But uh, while we are welcoming investment, we should also keep some things in mind that there are certain sectors which are very sensitive. Uh, like for instance, defense. Defense is a very sensitive item and uh, if we take uh, technology or investment, from China, uh, we don't know how reliable that would be. But even as India and China look forward to forging a new friendship, the Chinese troops entered 500 meters into the Indian territory in Ladakh on the 11th of September. As regards issues on the table here, sure, there are unresolved issues including the boundary question. And if your question is that would that be addressed, my answer to that is yes. We've already told you that all issues of a substantive nature will be addressed. Border issues remain the main sticking point between the two countries, but this time China is looking at winning India over with investments and development. $100 billion worth of investment is what China has promised India. But that's only one part of the story. The second part of the story is sustained economic investment in mega cities, in infrastructure, in power, also in railways. This is why India and China expect to move forward. There is the traditional distrust between the two countries, but the two powerful heads of state and government intend to move forward to overcome all hurdles. With cameraman Alok Bhatnagar, Gaurav Savant in Ahmedabad for headlines today.